Welcome, everybody, to the Ascend Welcome Night, Golden Gate University. My name is John Lord. I'm the director of the accounting program here at Golden Gate. Uh, thank you for coming to help us kick off the Ascend chapter. Uh, we're lucky to have a very good speaker, Fiona Mon. Some of you have got a chance to meet her, so we're uh, in for a great treat tonight. Um, I just wanted to take a couple of seconds to see uh, who we have in the house here. So how many are professionals? Professionals, okay, quite a few professionals. Students, a lot of students, good. Got a lot of students gonna join us then tonight. Uh, how many from Golden Gate University? St students from Golden Gate University. Awesome, you need to talk to Elaine and you need to join Ascend, you need to be involved. And we'll talk more about that uh, towards the end. Uh, other schools, San Francisco State in the house. Okay, good, there's my San Francisco State students. How about San Jose State? Y'all came a long way, thank you, okay. How about Stanford? Stanford, a lot of Stanford, okay, all right, awesome. In the house. All right guys, well thank you, uh, thank you for coming. GGU students, look at the support here, okay? Think about that, uh, all the people that are here to support you and get this chapter off the ground. And you're gonna get a chance to meet some of the student leadership here a little bit later. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to JJ. JJ is the D Vice President of student affairs. student affairs with Ascend, and he's gonna talk to you a little bit about his role. Great, thank you, John. And thank you all for being here tonight. As Fiona was, and I were just commenting, People, what are people doing on a Friday night? They're here, and that's great. Uh, it's wonderful to see you all, um, especially if, you know, given that you're from miles away and far and near. Um, and so you'll get to know more about Ascend as the as an evening goes. You'll hear from our great speakers about their personal experience and why Ascend is a value add in their life and it may be a value add for your life as well. Um, it is what uh, we're about, and it's Pan-Asian leaders, developing others, mentoring others, uh, empowering others. It's, it's what uh, we're about. Um, so with that, well, I'm in, in going to introduce our first uh, speaker tonight, and um, that's uh, Benita Prathan. And uh, she is a partner at BDO. Uh, sh her clients are small, I'm sorry, medium to large companies, as well as startups. She is our current president of Ascend. Um, it's a driving force for our organization. We're so proud to have her. And with that, Benita. Thank you, JJ. Good evening, everyone. You know, I was so excited to see so many people here, um, and obviously a lot of you are students, and that's quite exciting to me because that means, you know, I'm looking at the future, right? So, uh, and you are the future and you are the ones who are gonna make a difference. And why do I talk about difference? Because Ascend, in addition to the programs that we put out, professional programs as to how to help Pan-Asians Ascend, not that our programs are limited to Pan-Asians, but the data shows that Pan-Asians really do need help. Um, so where do those data points come from? Ascend, in addition to these programs, we also spend a lot of time doing research. Uh, thankfully, we have um, a lot of volunteers and board members you know, who uh, perhaps ran a company at some point. Perhaps they were the, the senior most Asian at uh, HP or Cisco or wherever they happen to come from. And they have educations from MIT and Stanford and you know, really, really smart people. And they, they spend a lot of time doing research. And in one of the research that we did, and Ascend does a lot, but uh, one of the research was around how are the Asians, the Pan-Asians in the Bay Area doing? And this was based on publicly available information, publicly available uh, data, employment data. And uh, that showed that, you know, I believe the data was gathered between 2009 and 2015. It showed in that time frame, while Asians had become the largest incoming minority group in any a professional minority group, Asians were also least likely to cut into middle or upper management. And the data points looked even more dismal if you looked at Asian females versus male, because it was even between Asian male and female, females were even less likely than their male counterparts to make it into the executive levels. Now, 
you know, when you just hear these data points, it's kind of hard to think, is that really? Because we see Asians all around in the Silicon Valley. You know, Sundar Pichai is an Asian, right? Satya Nadala is an Asian. And there are others as well, but those are the data points. And, uh, you know, as students of accounting, I think you would rather go with data than, you know, what we might see around. So what does that mean? That means there's a lot of work to be done. If you look at any, and since we have, uh, I'm assuming it's mostly accounting students here, and if not, please raise your hand. Um, if you look at any other accounting profession, especially in a public accounting, I would say uh, about 30%, especially in the Bay Area, would be Asians, just given our population. But then if you look at any other accounting firms, the numbers are pretty, you know, they, they tell the same story. Um, so in my professional journey, I started when they were big six, so that would tell you my age. And then I, you know, by the time I left the big four, and I joined BDO, which is the fifth largest. Um, so I've been in public accounting now. This is my 22nd year. And, uh, but if you look at any of the public accounting firms, you know, the data is still the same. Like, the minorities take up about 14 to, you know, 17 percent of the partner level and up positions. And if you were to call that data and look at how many of them are Asians, I don't think there's any uh, hard data out there, but I would say it's going to look very dismal. Um, so when I made partners several years back, my company didn't really keep tab, but I remember a lot of my friends saying, hey, are you the first Asian female partner? I knew there were other male partners, but I was pretty sure I was the first female partner at my firm. And it was quite interesting because my partner class, 40% were women. So it was kind of nice to see that, you know, at least 40% of my class were women, but I happen to be the first. So anyways, which is why it's very exciting for me to see all of you here, because you are the future, and I know you, know, you will change those data points, and if you weren't interested in that, you probably won't be here on a Friday night, right? So, uh, so without further ado, it is my pleasure today to introduce Fiona. And uh, through my work at Ascend, I got to know Fiona a little bit. I think I've met her a couple of times. She's a terrific speaker. I've always enjoyed listening to her. And her life alone is such a wonderful story. Um, and I don't know what she's going to talk about, but I have heard her life story as she spoke, and that was quite something. So let me talk a little bit about Fiona. She's actually a GGU alum, so is her brother. Fiona has been a trailblazer for Asians and women in leadership. Obviously, that goes without saying. And she also served as the first Asian woman speaker pro tem for California State Assembly. She's also the first CPA elected. Let's give her a hand on that. And in 2018, she received the most votes ever earned by a candidate for California treasurer and was sworn in as the first woman of color and only second CP to serve in this position. And you know, while I'm so happy and proud to say that she was the first woman of color to sworn in, my goal and a sense goal, and I hope all of our goals, is that one day that doesn't become an exciting line to read out. You know, nobody's, oh, okay, so you are, what, the 100th, you know, or 20,000th or what have you. So as the state treasurer, one of her main responsibilities is to act as the state's banker. Her office processes more than $2 trillion in payments annually, oversees an investment portfolio of over $100 billion, and sells over $100 billion of bonds a year. In addition, not that that was enough for her, <laughs> and that's Fiona. She chairs 16 programs that support economic and housing developments, financing, healthcare, and educational facilities, encouraging financial empowerment, public financing, and much more. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Fiona. Thank you, Benita. I'll use this one. All right, let's give it up for your president, Benita. So again, it's great to see you all here tonight. How many of you are on date night tonight? 
No? Okay, good. So you guys are very serious about your careers. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. And as Mary Jung said, she goes, tell your story, tell your story. How many of you have heard my story? Oh, okay, only two. Well, I will tell you my story then. So um, my parents were born in China. Uh, they left before the communists, um, went, emigrated to Hong Kong, uh, then met in uh, Toronto, Canada. And back then, my mom was an only child. Her father was a minister, and so she traveled around quite a bit. And my dad uh, was looking for a nice girl, so they would go to church picnics. And that's where he met my mom, because my mom was teaching Sunday school. She played the piano and the organ. She sang. Uh, and my dad became quite infatuated with her. Uh, he was a little bit older than her. So then uh, they moved from Toronto to New York City, and my dad decided to follow. Uh, my mom went to the uh, City College of New York. After she graduated, uh, she said to my dad, it's now or never. And so my dad had to make that decision, and he said, okay, we're going to get married. And so they uh, decided to get married in New York City. Then my dad got a scholarship to the University of Glasgow. Uh, so they moved uh, to, um, to uh, Scotland, and that's where I was conceived. So that's why I have the name Fiona. But my mom said, I'm not going to have you know, the baby there. I'll see you back in New York, come on back. And so I was born uh, in New York City at the New York Infirmary. Uh, and probably like typical, like many of you, uh, my parents were working, right, to save money. So I lived with my grandparents uh, during the week uh, in Chinatown while my parents uh, worked in Yonkers. And they would come and pick me up and then you know, spend the weekend and then they would go back and work. And they managed to save enough money uh, with a little loan from my grandparents after four years. And we bought our first house in Great Neck, Long Island. Any of you know where Great Neck, Long Island is? Some people do. Yes. So Great Neck is a, an amazing uh, city, one of the first exits on the LIRR. Everyone was Jewish, right? I didn't know that. So I grew up with all Jewish friends, all the holidays, like tonight is Rosh Hashanah, right? Uh, Yom Kippur, sorry, Yom Kippur. Um, and so growing up, uh, my parents said, as long as you get straight A's, you can do whatever you want, okay? So I, I was a pretty good student. Then my parents said, we would like you to be one of the lead professions, a lawyer, engineer, accountant, or a doctor. How many of you are parents like that, right? So I was good at math, and so my, my parents decided I should be an accountant. So uh, growing up, you know, I took all accounting classes, and I think it started, for those of you who are thinking about having kids later on, it really started in the fifth grade. My parents said I should be president of the Snake River Bank. It was like a project in the fifth grade, and they said, you should apply. And I go, I don't know, like a banker? And my mom wrote a letter, I still have it today, saying, I know my daughter, she's really good at math, she's honest, you know, I highly recommend her to be the bank president of the Snake River uh, Bank in my class. And I did, right? So kind of like pitched it in the back of my head, because I am the state banker today, right? So, um, so I, I went, um, you know, I grew up, my parents uh, didn't want me to really travel too far for college, so they said I could travel within driving, driving distance, uh, so um, they decided, or we decided, that I would go to the Rochester Institute of Technology, which was about a five-hour drive from my home. Um, I went for a number of reasons. Uh, number one, they had a paid co-op requirement. So you got paid to do two internships. Uh, number two, I got to play tennis. And the coach there was just so nice. She was like a grandma, and she welcomed us. And I really, um, really started uh, to feel good about being in Rochester. But if, if any of you have been in Rochester, 
it is cold. It is really cold. And it was hard to go uh, to RIT because I would, every winter, I'd go, Mom and Dad, I hate the cold. I want to transfer. I don't want to do accounting. It's really boring. And as you can imagine, my parents would say, stick with it. We'll talk to you next week, right? <laughs> Some of the accounting classes are not that much fun, right? And I have to say, I didn't have fun teachers either that really like made me want to stay in accounting, right? Because it was like a big school, right, Jonathan? Part of it is like whether you have good teachers that are mentoring you and like making it exciting. But I managed to make it through. I did my two co-ops with Ernst & Winnie, one of the big eight accounting firms, so now you can tell how old I am, Benita, uh, in uh, the Manhattan office in the trust in a state department. And I did my first co-op. They really liked me. I went back the next year. They really liked me. They wanted to hire me. But by that time, my parents said, we're moving out to San Francisco. Like, we're done with the cold. We want a little bit more diversity. My grandfather had moved churches to San Francisco in the Sunset District. And so they said, we'll see you out there. So I interviewed all over again and decided to stay with Ernst & Winnie in the real estate tax group. A Little bit more exciting, right? A Little bit. Uh, so I started there, um, did all of my audit hours. Um, they said they would pay for my master's at Golden Gate University. So I said, pay? Great. So I did it. And I have to tell you, the education that I got here was really invaluable. Uh, the instructors that I had were everyday um, professionals working in the industry. And it was actually fun. Because these people were like, I would see them. They had firms. They had you know, good advice. You know, not just like, hey, read the textbook and maybe write a paper. But um, it, was a, it was an amazing, amazing experience. And I'm very thankful for my education here, since I have two professors and a dean here, um, um, for the education that I got. Uh, and then after getting all of my audit hours and getting them signed off after five years, uh, like Bonita, um, I decided to quit because there were no women partners at the time. There were very few women senior managers. Uh, and they worked us hard, right? 10 hours so we can get pizza for dinner, right? Do you remember that? You can sign off and get pizza. So I was like, this isn't for me. So I left, started my own practice, and while I was out in the community, uh, someone tapped me on the shoulder and said, Miss Ma, if you want to get clients quickly, you should be president of this association. It was called the Asian Business Association. They said, it's a nonprofit, we're not going to pay you, it's not going to be a lot of work, and you should do this. And I was really gullible. I was like, okay, I want to start my practice. I'm going to do it. But it was more than a full-time job. Any of you get, are you, any of you involved in a nonprofit? Ascend, right? <laughs> okay, right? You're like, why did I sign up for this? Sometimes it's, it's like, like Friday night, you're here. You could be on a date. Okay, okay. Okay, so anyway, so um, then again, then my job became representing uh, Asian women, minority small businesses, uh, to try to get more business opportunities at the uh, local contracting level, the state, and also in the private sector. And so that's how I started my public service experience at the age of 28, advocating on behalf of MWBE businesses. That's what uh, they used to be called. So as I was going out to all these meetings and, and lobbying and, and showing up, um, I noticed that, number one, small business is supposed to be the lifeblood of our economy, yet there weren't a lot of elected officials that were from small business or understood small business. It seemed like they kept passing laws that made it more difficult for small businesses to operate. Uh, there also weren't a lot of women in elected office, and back then, not a lot of Asians either. And so I started like getting into it. I started getting involved in clubs. I started the West Side Chinese Democratic Club. I volunteered on campaigns. I did pro bono filings for all these candidates. And I said to my mom and dad, you know, I thank you for your sacrifice, you know, but I really don't think 
uh, my calling is to sit and do people's taxes for 16 hours a day, every 15th of the month, right? Deadlines, I'm sorry mom, dad, I just like, I don't like sitting at a desk. And of course my parents would say, well, um, being an accountant is a good job, it's an honorable profession, we really think you should stick with it, right? And I'd be like, well, I don't know, you know, I got a job part-time with a state senator, Senator John Burton, I got appointed to the Assessment Appeals Board, I mean, they can kind of see I'm like, kind of like going away from accounting. And so my parents would say, well, it would really make us happy if you got your MBA. We think that'll bring you back to your senses. You should apply, executive MBA program, we'll pay for it. You go to Pepperdine, right? And so I go, okay, if it makes you happy, I'll do it. So I applied, I got in, I did 18 months, finished straight A's again. Um, and my parents were like, okay, so what do you think? And I said, well, I still think I want to run for office. You know, I, I really want to help people, you know? I, I feel this like urge. And my parents said, well, you're 34 years old. Uh, we would really like you to get married. <laughs> Your older brother is waiting to get married. He's two years younger. He's been dating his girlfriend for, you know, three years. Like, you need to get married first. So I said, okay. I found someone that I thought my dad would approve of. He was like an MBA, also from Berkeley. He was an engineer like my dad. He played tennis. He was half Asian. Okay, my dad was really happy. He was like more excited than I was, right? <laughs> so I got married and I was like, okay, dad, you know, like, I, I, I done everything you all want. Can you just please bless me? Let me try to do something that I want to do. And my parents were like, all right, fine. Do you want to do that? Go ahead. We love you. If you don't win, it's okay. We're moving to Las Vegas. <laughs> and they left. And that was the first time at the age of 36 I was able to do something that I wanted to do. And some of you probably are from the same parents. They don't care whether you're happy. It's whether they're happy. You know, this next, this new generation of millennials, I love when parents say, oh, we just want you to be happy. Do something that makes you happy. And these kids are like, I need to be happy. But like my generation, no, you do what we want. That makes us happy, right? So um, they finally left. I was able to run for office. Uh, I ran for the San Francisco Board of Supervisors in the Sunset District. How many of you live here in San Francisco understand how San Francisco politics works? right? Uh, there's 11 districts and the Sunset District, which is where all the Chinese people moved after the Irish and the Italians moved, uh, was considered the Chinese District, right? It was 2002. And I think I won because it's a Chinese Irish District and with a name like Fiona Ma, how could I not win, right? <laughs> So I think my parents knew way back when, you know, I always say things happen for a reason, right? So uh, I, I ran, um, I won, there were seven of us, I won uh, that seat. I was the only Asian on the Board of Supervisors back in 2002, representing the Sunset District, which is the Chinese seat. And back then, I hired uh, two, we only had two aides, and I hired two Chinese aides. That had never happened before. They're like, you can't hire two Chinese people. And I said, well, if I'm the only Chinese representative, everybody is gonna come to me, right? So one spoke Mandarin, one spoke Cantonese. And then there were two women. They were like, you can't hire two women? I go, why not, right? Well, there was a lot of legislators that had two men, but they had never had two women as their aides. Uh, you know, forget about having two Chinese women. So there were three of us in the office. They all looked like me. It was amazing. Um, and I didn't really understand what the problem was. I was like, my job is to help people, right? When people call, they can't speak English. Um, they want to see, you know, someone that looks like them, that understands their, their issues, right? So I spent four years on the Board of Supervisors in San Francisco, was miserable, miserable because there were only two women and nine men back then and I wasn't ready to fight these guys 
Sophie Maxwell, she was an African-American grandma. Like, we didn't get into public service to fight every day, right? So after four years, uh, the assembly seat opened up, and I was like, I'm ready to go. And so I ran for the state assembly, uh, representing the west side of San Francisco, Daly City, Broadmoor, and Colma. Uh, there was another wealthy woman in the race. We're both Democrats, so it's two women Democrats running for the state assembly. And it was really interesting uh, because we had a really great race. We both didn't attack each other. We both talked about what we brought to the table. And so I learned that not every campaign has to be nasty, right? Even though that's what people say works, that's what you see out there, but it doesn't have to be that way. Um, so I ended up getting elected. I spent four years as the majority whip, two years as speaker pro tem. You probably don't even know what those positions are, but those are leadership positions, and you get them because uh, you raise a lot of money, basically. You raise money and you give money uh, to the party. Um, so I did that. I got 60 bills signed by two different governors. How many of you remember when Arnold Schwarzenegger was the governor? He is back in the Terminator, but he was our governor for, for seven years. Uh, and then Jerry Brown became governor, and even during the Great Recession, 2008, when overnight we faced a $40 billion deficit and everyone was freaking out because everybody's funding uh, was impacted. So I did that for six years, and then I uh, faced term limits. So by this time, my parents had moved back, by the way. Uh, my mother has um, suffered from depression all her life. When she moved to Las Vegas, she wasn't happy. She didn't have her church, she didn't have her Chinese food, didn't have her kids, didn't have her community, and she stopped taking her medication. And so my dad didn't know what to do. He says, your mom won't get out of bed. I don't know what to do. And I said, mom, bring her home. So we brought her home, um, stabilized her at UCSF, uh, and after she got out, she goes, I'm not going to Vegas. And my dad goes, what do you mean you're not going to Vegas? She goes, no, I'm not going. So I said, okay, why don't you move in with me temporarily, mom and dad? Well, temporarily is 15 years now, <laughs> right? Um, but I now understand why kids don't want to move out, right? When you go home, there's food in the fridge. Uh, there is paper. There, uh, you know, my, I never run out of um, toner. My dogs are happy. My car is moved on street cleaning day. Like, I know why kids don't want to move out anymore. I don't want to move out anymore, right? So, um, so my, my parents moved back, and I was facing uh, term limits, and I was like, well, I don't have anything to run for. And my dad goes, that's a sign. You need to go back and be a an accountant. <laughs> you know, you could be a partner at a firm, finally. So I have kept my CPA license, um, my 80 hours every two years, believe it or not, since 1992. Because number one, it made my parents happy that I was still a CPA. But to this day, having those three letters actually helps me in my job, right? I'm actually kind of qualified to do this job, yeah? So I said, Mom, Dad, I, I said, I'm going to run for the State Board of Equalization. And my dad goes, what's that? And I said, well, look it up. And he said, oh, it's a tax board, okay? It's kind of getting closer. So he kind of blessed me to run. So I ran for the Board of Equalization, and we are the only, back then, the Board of Equalization was the only elected tax board in the nation. So a lot of people don't know that, but if you have a business, you have to pay sales tax, you know what the Board of Equalization is. So I did that for four years, uh, found out it was not well run, blew up the agency, uh, and now I was like, what am I gonna do next, right? Don't really have an agency that's, um, that's functioning. And I started working on cannabis taxes. Cannabis, you guys all know cannabis? Yes? It's legal in California? Yes. Um, but we were supposed to collect taxes 
at the dispensaries. And I said, how much are we collecting? Nobody knew how much we were collecting. And I started to go around the state of California, like figuring out like what is this new cannabis industry, right? I grew up in New York, didn't understand the Emerald Triangle. Uh, and I started to understand that there is a problem here. This business operates in cash. How many of you carry cash in your wallet? I barely have a dollar, okay? <laughs> Yet this whole industry carries cash, and we were collecting tax revenues in cash, sometimes $400,000 in a day. That was crazy to me. I go, what is going on? So I started working on the banking industry, and when my friend, my good friend John Chung, the state treasurer, said he was going to run for governor, I was like, oh, I want to run for treasurer. Like, I had never thought I would run for treasurer, right? But my dad was like, treasurer? I get treasure of the fourth, fifth largest economy. You should run for treasure. I was like, okay, I'm running for treasure. This is like awesome. You know, finally, my parents, um, you know, have, have, uh, um, are supporting me. So I ran and I got elected, started this January as the 34th state treasurer. I have to say that this is one of the best jobs okay, because I get to use both sides of my brain. So all the things that I learned here at Golden Gate, at RIT, at Pepperdine, right, um, managing trillions of dollars and billions in bonds and short-term investments, right, that kind of satisfies all of the things that you are all here doing in this room. But then on the other side, I chair 16 boards and commissions that finances everything else from affordable housing, uh, schools, hospitals, advanced manufacturing, green tech, electric vehicle charging stations, small business loans. I sit on the California Earthquake Authority. I'm a member of the CalPERS and CalSTRS. So everything, anything that's happening here in the state of California, I am involved in. I have a nexus to. Uh, I am actually like funding everything that happens. And so for me, what I want to say to you all is, I don't know how many of you want to be, you know, tax auditors all your life or uh, tax preparers all your life, but sometimes things come full circle. And 20 years later, like I have the dream job and I'm using everything that I learned through my education, through my professional experience uh, to do this job. And I have to say, I think I'm pretty good at it. I'm just telling you. I think I am kicking ass in this job, okay? But it is because of everything that I've learned. And so I tell a lot of you know, young people whose parents want them to do something. Obviously, your parents don't want you to do anything because you're here on a Friday night. Um, but understanding accounting, budgets, numbers, you know, finances, economics, I think is the key. You will always have a job. You will always be in demand. People will always depend on you. And this, to me, is the most important profession uh, in this world. And you're getting a great opportunity here at Golden Gate and at Stanford and at State. You know, keep it up. Keep up your license. Go and get your master's, you know, if possible. Um, maintain your networks, because you just never know. Sometimes you play it forward, sometimes you pay it back, right? One of my good friends, Mary Jung, is gonna be here. She's a CPA, and I always refer, I refer a lot of clients to Mary, because I know she's good. And then when a position opened at the California uh, Board of Accountancy, they said, do you have anyone you can recommend? I'm like, Mary Jung. And Mary Jung is now on the California Board of Accountancy where she is overseeing a lot of the cases, the disciplinary cases that come before her with CPAs that are actually in practice. And it is important that we have people who understand the profession to be able to make that judgment. Uh, for others who are in the profession. So I thank all of you for coming here tonight. I hope you will keep in touch with me. I have certificates for the Ascend uh, group. And again, if you want to come intern in my office, we love internships. We don't pay you, <laughs> but you're more than happy to 
uh, come to my office. If you have time, you want to drive around with me. I drive around a lot in the state. If you follow me on social media, I am here, I am there, I'm catching a plane. Okay, last night, I was at like the Tesla. Do you see that, the Tesla truck, the cyber truck? I was there, it was cool. Elon Musk, the CFO, said, hey, you want to come meet with us? I said, I'm on a plane, I just landed in Sacramento. I spent all day in Sacramento. I'm catching an 845 out of Burbank. I'm gonna spend some time with my husband who, you know, he's a firefighter. Okay, I wanna just talk about spouses for a moment. Do I have a, a minute? Yes, I do. Okay, spouses. It is very important who you pick as a spouse in life. I just wanna say, this is my fourth elected position. I spend a lot of time out in the community with people um, just networking, because that's what I do. Like, I'm a grassroots. Some people get elected because they have a lot of money. Some people get elected, like Bernie Sanders, because he touches people and, and people want to, right, meet him and support him. So I'm one of those grassroots um, uh, candidates because I just don't have the millions and billions of dollars. Um, so, uh, where was I going? Where's I going with this? Okay, spouses. So, yes, so my husband is a firefighter. He is a firefighter in Ventura County. Any of you know where Ventura County is? Right? Yes. Uh, Oxnard is between Malibu and Santa Barbara. So that's where he lives and works. I live and work up north. It works perfectly, because we do not see each other every day. He works like three days a week and I see him four days and then I get to like do what I need to do and then, so that's why I'm catching an 8.45 flight to see him because he is off tomorrow. Uh, we have a putt-putt tournament. He started a, uh, a tournament to benefit nonprofits. Then we will catch a plane back up here. We're gonna go see the 49ers on Sunday. Anybody gonna watch the game? Go Niners. And then I'm back at work on, on Monday. Uh, but picking someone who supports you in what you want to do uh, is very, very important. And I would suggest when you do think about getting married, um, having kids, you should have an honest conversation about what you want to do in life. Like, if you have ambitions to run for office, come talk to me. I will advise you, this is not the life for everybody, okay? It's a great life for me, but it's not a great life for having a family and having kids, right? So um, you just have to like pick your, your, your spouse um, carefully, hope that you share those same goals uh, professionally in life, right? If you wanna own your own company, you wanna be partner of one of the big four accounting firms, that's a lot of work, right? You know that, it's a lot of work. You're not home a lot, right? Um, but if, you know, I just, um, come talk to me. That's all I'm saying. And ladies, ladies, you know, I know they always say, oh, you can do it all. Like as Benita says, mm, you can do things. We can do things. We may not be able to do everything all the time at the same time. And it is definitely a sacrifice. Uh, it is definitely harder as a woman. There are double standards. We have to work harder. It is like uh, Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire. You know how Ginger Rogers did everything Fred Astaire did, but in backwards and in high heels? That is still true to this day. It is not equal. It is not equal in pay. It is not equal in our opportunities. It is not equal in the way we are treated. It is getting better. And as Asians, depending on what industry you're working in, um, it's, it's tough as well, right? But we work hard, that's how we were brought up. We work hard, tell us what the rules are, we will play by the rules, we will work as hard as we can. But again, find mentors, you know, find those opportunities, always say yes. That was my kind of curse, my office always says, she always says yes. Yeah, I say yes, but look where I am today, right? Right, you say yes, opportunities and doors open to you. So just be positive and open. Even though you may not get paid for everything you do, um, things happen for a reason. And eventually, if you follow your gut uh, and your heart, 
um, you will be doing things um, that you are going to be satisfied in. Because every day, it's not about the money. You can't be waking up every day for the money. You got to be waking up because you feel like you are doing something that you are meant to do every day. And hopefully that's making a difference for this world. So thank you very much. Thank you, Fiona. Um, great comments, my uh, accounting students, okay? Remember, remember all these words, very, very important. Um, you have some yeah, things that you want to? So JJ, you want to come on up? Um, JJ. All right, so come on up. And um, we're going to call up uh, Amy to uh, give you a little token also of okay. our appreciation. So I'll call up Amy. Sign though, right? We need the sign. Oh. <laughs> That's what a mover and a shaker does. <laughs> they move the sign. <laughs> I'm Amy McClellan. I'm the Dean of the Tax and Accounting Schools here at Golden Gate University. And Fiona's one of our very special gr graduates of our program. We're so proud to have you here. Your talk was really wonderful and inspirational. So this is a thank you note from us and a little gift, a Golden Gate University trinket to put on your desk. <laughs> thank you, thank you yeah. so much. I, I really appreciate your generosity in coming tonight. Thanks again, Fiona. We know you have to catch your flight. Um, but I wanted to call up Megan Gray, who is uh, from our uh, mentoring program. And she's going to talk a little bit about how Golden Gate and Ascend can work together uh, to help you to get mentors and um, move your career forward. Great. Thank you, John. And thank you so much, Fiona. That was a w so inspiring. Uh, we're honored to have you as a part of our own. <laughs> um, Okay, so I just want to say hello, and my name is Megan Gray. I'm the Director of Mentorship here at Golden Gate University. Uh, the Mentorship Program is a brand new initiative for the university, and the program brings together our students, alumni, faculty, staff, and industry partners um, to help with networking, professional growth, and career advancement. I think you're going to hear a little bit more from Ascend about their own programs with mentoring, but it's my understanding that uh, by having a chapter here at GGU, we can work together on developing a mentor network, first of all, so inviting alums, curious alums in the audience from Golden Gate University, raise your hand. All right, great, loud and clear, nice to see you. Um, so part of the mentoring program is for alums to become engaged in the university and to give back to students, also to help one another. So our mentorship program will um, expand for the whole university to be a community of support for one another. Uh, we also are looking to collaborate and partner with um, other professionals in the field. So it, mentorship is really about your community, and I just want to say that um, for me, mentorship is about the opportunities that arise. Um, everything from you know personal connections, uh, knowledge exchange, uh, professional socialization, self-reflection, contribution, discovery, advocacy, growth, and well-being. I know that. Um, mentorship and being having the opportunity to meet people and to hear stories like Fiona's, uh, to be inspired, motivated, um, and think, I actually need to talk with her about something. Just having these ideas and wanting to seek that mentorship from other people can happen at any level. And so um, with working with your, your peers, uh, your student peers, your faculty, staff members, the community and alumni, I just wanna encourage you all to seek mentorship. You know, have a mindset that's about growing and, um, and thriving and if you do that, and by being here tonight, I will say that you have made the biggest step taking your Friday to be here and to hear what people have to say and to get involved and to engage in this idea of networking and professionalism and figuring out 
is this right for you? And where can I go? Who can I talk to that's going to help you along the way? So mentorship, very exciting here for the university. And for those of you who are at, at the other universities, I know you have mentoring programs there as well. So take advantage, get involved, uh, look to each other, look to the, um, the professionals in our field, and uh, go forth. And happy connecting. Thank you, Megan. Um, at this point, uh, we're going to call up Mary uh, Gong, who uh, Fiona had mentioned is um, with the State Board of Accountancy. So Mary's up there uh, in Sacramento fighting for you to make sure that all the CPA requirements are going in the right direction and helping you to get certified. And Mary is really a founding member of Ascend, and so um, I'm going to go ahead and let her say a few words. Hi. Yes, um, my name is Mary Jiang, and I have my own tax practice, so I'm doing some of the taxes that Fiona doesn't want to do. Uh, but also, um, I've worked for 20 years with this franchise tax board. How many people are working? So if you're working, you know you have to pay your taxes to the IRS and the franchise tax board. So I worked there for 20 years as an auditor, auditing high net worth uh, individuals, corporation, partnerships, and LLC. And so I retired from there and decided to go to the other side of the fence and help people to not get audited by the IRS and the franchise tax work. So, because I know what they're looking for and what are red flags and I can help my clients. Don't go that way. I know what they're looking for. And I, most of my practice is not so much taxes anymore. It's really consulting, how to get these people out of trouble when they get letters from the IRS and the Franchise Tax Board. You know, and, and people get anxiety. When you see a letter from the IRS, you know, you just, oh my God, what did, what did, what did they have on me? But I'm an alumni of Golden Gate University. I got my MBA here and a master in taxation. So I feel like I covered both in the consulting side and the tax side. So about 12 years ago, uh, SEN was a sort of an idea that someone says, you know, we don't have a national organization that takes into consideration a pan-Asian. So I was on the founding um, group that formed a SEN 12 years ago. And, and it's a long journey. And at that time, you can see we have uh, an established chapters throughout the United States, New York, Chicago, Texas, Washington, D.C., Seattle, San Francisco, um, Los Angeles, so Canada, international. And then along with each chapter, we form student chapters. So we have student chapters here at UC Berkeley. Anybody from Berkeley here? San Francisco State, we do. Um, we have one at UC Davis and then Golden Gate University. I'm so glad to see that Golden Gate University has joined uh, as a former student chapter. When I was going to school here, it was part-time like many of us. If we didn't have a association of this to help Asian students, teach them the soft skill. You guys are brilliant when it comes to academic, but to make it ascend into this world, you need to know some of the soft skill, the leadership skill. We didn't have mentoring, so we learned by the seat of our pants. And so I'm glad that they form a mentoring program here. Uh, ascend, if you're a student of Ascend, we do show you, we have soft skills, communication skill, interviewing skill, things that the university does, but we also do one step further. So I think that's important. And the key thing is that networking is so big. I think we mentioned networking. Ascend provide networking. It's where you network, learn how to communicate. By networking through Ascend, I met Fiona, obviously. And Fiona later says, well, Mary, I need somebody. I, I was, uh, I, one of the things that you learn from networking is to be active. It's not enough just to do your academic study. You guys all could be brilliant students like Fiona, straight A's. But you need to know how to talk to people, how to network, how to give back. 
One of the things that I want to impress about many of the Asians, you know, you need to also step outside and see the world. You need to give back to the community so that volunteering in nonprofit, volunteer at the school, volunteer at organization, it pays back double fold, triple fold. Because I was involved with Ascend and met Fiona. Later she said, well, Mary, you know, I need somebody to maybe um, join us on the board of the California Board of Accountancy. Now, I said, you think I'm qualified? She said, hell yes. And then, because I also volunteer at the uh, East Bay chapter of the Cal CPA Society. If you guys all want to be CPA, you need to be active outside of the work environment and the school environment. So joining a SENS GGU's chapter is one way. So I serve on the board of the Cal CPA and later became the president of the East Bay chapter. So that way you sort of, your name is not out there, but at least someone says, you have some credibility. You have done your homework. You met other CPAs, other professionals, other firms, and they sort of recognize you know, your credibility. So when she asked me to, to, to volunteer, I, I learned what she said. Always says yes, because it does help. So all of you guys who are applying for a county in any of the school, you know, the Board of California Board of Council is the one that helps to license you guys. So they, and we do outreach and Golden Gate could also invite any member from you know CBA to come here and talk about what are the procedures to get licenses as a CPA. We do outreach. And then you go do your, and then you continue education. We monitor all your continuing education. And we also monitor and discipline people who've done not so good jobs as being you know, in the tax and accounting profession. And I do read these court cases that is about three inches deep about somebody's, you know, not so good uh, uh, work at, as an as accountant. But, so that's part that you need to do, give back. And then, uh, so when I met John, Professor John Lure at San Francisco State Outreach, he was telling me about an idea that he wants to find ways to help the students sit for the CPA exam earlier, before graduation. The normal way is you graduate and then you take your CPA review course and then you take your test. Back in the old days, it's not even computerized. Now it's computerized. But he said, there's a way if I can get them there sooner so they can go earn money. And he, he mentioned his idea to me and I said, John, put it in writing so that way I can remember what you want. I brought it up to uh, the, the president and executive director of uh, California Board of Council and says, you know, Professor Lohr has this very interesting idea. Can you do some research and see if it's doable now? Okay, I just notified Professor Lohr yesterday or day before that his proposal is now in the pipeline to allow students, if they're about six months or four months before graduation, they can sit for the CPA exam as long as they get their degree. Uh, afterward, there's a time frame that you're gonna have to, you know, fulfill it. But he says that way it gives you six months step ahead of any other students that might be um, other schools that don't allow that. So if we have it allowed in California, you guys are ahead of the nation. Right now, he mentioned Washington, state of Washington does that. That's why he got that idea. And then we said, yeah, if another state could do it, so can California. So. So these are the, some of the connections that you tell you when you meet with people. You know, John met me and said, here's, so we can help each other. Now, I'm also giving back to the community. Each year I do pro bono tax return for people with income less than 55,000. Some of you guys are students who qualify working for tax A or VITA. Does Golden Gate University have a VITA program here? Yes. Yes, so that's where you can give back by, you know, helping them and you meet interesting people. And these people someday may be helpful you in your career. So I just want to say, Golden Gate University helped me in my profession, then I wanted to help others. So it's always important to, to think about how you can help the next person, because it will come back in full circle, because someone helped you and you helped them, 
and that someone can help me in the future. So anyway, I appreciate you know, the opportunity to say a few words to my fellow alumni in the future. Thank you, Mary. That's great. Thank you so much. I knew we had to have Mary here. I saw her speak at San Francisco State that time, and I just, uh, we met a long, long time ago, and I remember at a Berkeley event, I remember you talking about the starts of a sense, so that's, that's fabulous. Thank you so much. Um, at this point, uh, I want to recognize uh, a few of the firms that are actually uh, helping to get the Ascend chapter um, off the ground by contributing and uh, providing some seed money and some and some funding. So uh, I want to call them up and thank them, but also plant the idea that uh, maybe others that would like to uh, contact me and contact our student leadership that I'm going to introduce in a minute to help get the uh, chapter off the ground. Uh, we're uh, we're more than happy to have your money, your contribution. So uh, I'm going to start with Jane Kai. Uh, Jane is a GGU alum uh, with uh, Tau Capital, and she's going to go ahead and say a couple of words uh, about uh, Ascend and GGU. You want to come? Well, you can come on down, Jane. Yes, sorry. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited to be here, and I see the crowd grow. Like 20 years ago, I participated. It's probably a much smaller crowd. And um, as you said, I'm alumni of uh, GGU, and um, I have two staffs who recently graduated from Master of Accountancy at GGU as well. So I'm very proud of them. And um, I'm just very happy that I'm able to giving back to Ascent so thank you so much. And I guess I should uh, mention that Jane uh, was my former student as well. So and I have a lot of my students here. So the uh, older you get, the better your students, the more you see your students uh, rising up in the profession. So I should have mentioned Jane is the controller at Tau Capital. So uh, our next um, company is Moss Adams. And um, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, ask Brian Wong to come on up. And Brian is a tax CPA at Moss Adams. Moss is one of the big CPA firms, a stone throw away across the street. Right across the street. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Lord. Really appreciate that. All right, so again, my name is Brian Wong. I'm a senior manager at Moss Adams. Um, just to give a quick shout out, I'm joined here by two colleagues, Rohit Rampur and McConnell Ward. Um, so I just want to share a couple of things about myself and then of the firm. Um, about myself, I'm not going to give you my story. I only have a decade of experience, so there's not a lot to steer, share there. And um, I won't give anybody spousal advice because I've only been married for a year. <laughs> All right, so a little bit about myself. Um, I work at Moss Adams. I'm a tax corporate consultant. Um, work a lot with our technology um, companies here in the Bay Area. Um, I do a lot of tax provisions. I know that GGU has a tax provision course because I took it. And um, if anybody is ever interested in kind of getting real life feedback, I'd be happy to chat with any of you. Um, so cool, fun tidbit. Um, about actually more than a decade ago, I, with some of my best friends at San Francisco State, launched the San Francisco State Ascend student chapter, and it was one of the best things I've ever did for my own career. And the reason why I say that was when I was looking back and looking at all the student organizations at San Francisco State, Ascend did one thing that the other organizations didn't do, and it was affiliated with a professional chapter. And what that helped me do was network really early on, as Mary mentioned. So I remember being a sophomore and already meeting with partners and directors at the big four, mid-sized firms, and small CPA firms. And just thinking back, funny enough, I think I met a whole lot more tax people, which is probably why I've been doing this for a decade now. So um, hopefully that kind of gives more support for being a member of Ascend, because I think it's a phenomenal organization. Um, Moss Adams, for those of you that don't know, um, we are a full-service accounting, audit, and tax firm. Um, in California, we are the fifth largest accounting firm. In the U.S., we are a top 15 firm. Um, we employ more than 3,300 employees in the U.S., and we serve clients um, in all 50 states and more than 100 different countries. 
Um, for those that are interested, we actually do have job openings, both full-time and internships in both audit and tax. Uh, Makana over here, if you don't mind standing up really quick, has some flyers and um, he'd be happy to share those with you. And we'd be happy to answer any questions that you guys might have about our firm, about uh, tax provisions, if anyone is interested, or about Ascend. So thank you all for having us here and we are very glad to be here. Thank you, Professor Ward. I did not know that about uh, that you were involved in the start of the Ascent chapter at San Francisco State, so that's great. That's an extra extra feather. So Moss and uh, Jane Tau Capital, thank you so much for your contributions. Again, um, if you're interested in contributing to the chapter, please don't hesitate. Okay, we'd uh, be more than happy to uh, to have you do that. Okay, uh, so at this point, I'm going to ask uh, JJ to come back up and we're gonna talk about how to become more involved in Ascend here at uh, Golden Gate University. Uh, while JJ's coming up, I think uh, Fiona, would, Fiona would like me to hold up. Uh, there's information in the back table about the tra state treasurer's office being involved. Also, um, we have some degree sheets for Golden Gate University, our Masters of Science in Accounting, Master of Science in Tax, some degree sheets back there. Some of you may be uh, thinking about a master's program, so I would encourage you to pick up that as well as the uh, information that Moss has. So I'm going to go ahead and let JJ talk about a little bit the process of uh, starting the chapter and getting involved. Okay. So one of the most important things is that we need to have um, our charter group form, and that has to be a minimum of 25 students to uh, officially launch Ascend GGU. And so that's where we're counting on the GGU students to be a part of this. You're becoming a part of tonight, but you're also becoming a part of how much more you're going to be able to accomplish. Talk to others that have uh, had groups of Ascend at San Francisco State. Um, we have uh, Grace as well. Where, where's Grace? Grace is the current president for San Francisco State. Um, and so talk to her about her experience and what it means to be a part of Ascend and, and going forward. Once you join Ascend as a student and you, know, you participate in mentoring programs, uh, activities like uh, mock interviews, um, things uh, uh, have to do with uh, giving back to the community, of course, you know, accounting and tax related things, but there, it's not limited to just that audience. It's really providing Pan-Asians an opportunity to come together and have an environment of safety, an environment of brave, uh, bravery to be able to work together, trust each other, and be able to grow and learn together. Uh, once you graduate, it's not the end. Then it's Ascend Professionals um, a organization as well, which I'm a part of and, and a board member. Uh, Katz is my fellow uh, co-chair for uh, Vice President of Student Affairs. And so there's, uh, it's, it's an opportunity to, to move forward. Uh, you have a network of 60,000 professionals. We have 40 student chapters and growing. Um, and so it's a, it's a huge uh, network that you can uh, leverage. And uh, as Mary has experienced, as Fiona has talked about tonight, um, it's, a, it's a membership into a community that will keep on giving back dividends for you. So I strongly urge GGU students, if you haven't already contacted John, to you know, please do so. Uh, we need your help to make this an official chapter and then uh, move forward. Um, and then you know, invite others. As we've tonight, you know, we've uh, been allies with uh, Stanford here, San Francisco State, San Jose. Uh, we're counting on those allies to continue and to grow um, forward. Excellent. And uh, so you can see up on the screen uh, some of the key things. Uh, charter member, as JJ mentioned, the first 25 members that join the Golden Gate University Ascend chapter will be charter members. And I believe you just get a tattoo uh, of a C. <laughs> okay, that's all it takes. Uh, and uh, joining is one of the first 25 members. So you want to do that. Um, also, uh, Becker CPA Review, we've talked about passing the CPA exam, Becker is an organization that helps you pass that exam, and I was able to twist that, I mean, talk them into giving a scholarship uh, to an Ascend member. And then uh, we are working to uh, plan future events, so this is a good opportunity to join as a charter member, 
get a chance for the scholarship and be involved in the ground floor planning some of these events. So I want to uh, introduce our student leadership so far. Okay, Elaine Guo is here. Elaine, so I'm sure all, you all know her. And then we have Jerry Wong is here. And then uh, Candice Yan, okay, and two of them uh, have suffered through my class and look, they still look uh, just as happy and, uh, and young as they were when they came into the class. So uh, you should reach out. Uh, Elaine has been generous enough to provide her email. Please reach out. Uh, note that we will have a meeting uh, after the new year. Uh, refreshments will be served and that's when we're going to be getting get going on some of these initiatives and stay tuned for some information about uh, joining the chapter and becoming a charter member. Um, that I think is our uh, program okay. for tonight. Um, so be before we close, yeah. uh, I just want to say thank you to all our volunteers for tonight. Uh, thanks for helping out. Uh, raise your hand for volunteers. Great. Let's give them a warm hand. Thanks so much. Great, and for any Ascend current members, so we have uh, part of our board here as well, um, the companies, San Francisco State. If you are currently an Ascend member, please stand. Great, and for those of you in the room, these are the folks that you want to talk to and ask questions about what Ascend is about, um, how it's been uh, a value add in their life, and what it can mean for you. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, guys. And there's uh, still plenty of, um, you know, refreshments. So please feel free to take some time, um, meet some folks. And um, thanks again. And we'll see yep. you at the next. We event. have the Thank space you. until 8:30. So please network, get <laughs> to know right. each other. That's right. They won't throw us out. <laughs> thanks for being here. Have a good night.